In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. <clears throat> Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading appointed for this fourth Sunday in Advent is from Micah chapter 5. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, 
who are too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she, who is in labor, has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 10. When Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. When he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, Behold, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And by that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed, with a loud cry, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. 
He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father.
we hear again from the reading in Luke 1. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. In the name of Jesus. From now on, from this day forward, says Mary, all generations will call me blessed. And so here we are in the generations following, and we do. We call Mary most blessed among women. We can think of times where we use her name in honor. St. Mary's Church in Wittenberg, Germany, Martin Luther himself preached there. It was his hometown, and St. Mary's Church stands still today cradle of the Reformation of the Church, her name is remembered. Martin Luther himself wrote a beautiful exposition of Mary's Magnificat, the words that we had this morning. And his exposition was over 60 pages long. Her words are remembered in the church. In our hymnal, you can find over seven pieces of music specifically based on Mary's Magnificat, including the Magnificat in the Vesper service, there's one in evening prayer, elsewhere in the liturgies, and several Magnificat hymns toward the back of the hymnal. The church has sung her words throughout, as Mary says, all generations. She is blessed among women. Women are blessed by God to be the bearers of life, such that Eve, the first mother, her name even meant that. It meant living or giving life. Women are blessed by God to be bearers of life, for the man alone brings forth no life, so that God says for the man to be alone is not good. Genesis 2.18. He's the God of life. Life is what is good. And he blessed women to be its bearer. Sin was brought in. We know that. And now life comes at a price. Only by the sweat of your brow will you eat, says the Lord to Adam, Genesis 3.19. With sin now belonging to Adam and Eve in their lineage, life comes at a price. All the children of Adam will now see death. Eve bears children only with much pain. And we know that some women cannot even bear children in this life of pain. Some parents even bring not life and gifts to their children, but tyranny, and even worse. But the promise, the promise from God that life from Eve's lineage would come, and in that lineage would be the Savior of the world, the promise that all sins are forgiven by virtue of that Savior, the promise to Eve that all the children of Adam and Eve who belong to the sentence of death, all would be atoned for redeemed by the blood of Eve's greater son. The promise that the curse would be removed, and for those born of flesh, they would hear the word of blessing. The promise will be given from Eve's lineage. Eve, blessed by God to be the bearer of life, found in her sin, then Eve, blessed by God to be the bearer of the lineage by which God would bring forth his own son, born in human flesh to redeem all humans with his own blood. Eve, blessed by God, and now generations later, Mary, the greater daughter of Eve's lineage. A simple woman, one among many, lowly and of humble estate. Mary, taken up by the Lord to be his servant, given child by the Lord, that Mary's son would with his own blood 
redeem all those born of the generations of Eve. So Mary says, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. Behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed, for he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. Luke 147. Mary calls this child that she's bearing in her womb God my Savior. He is true God of the same substance as the Father and the Holy Spirit. True God now come in the flesh as true man. So he is true God and true man as we say in the Athanasian Creed, not by conversion of the divinity into human flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. He is God and man in such a way then that everything he does in the flesh, the suffering, the humiliation, the death on the cross, the resurrection of the body on the third day, everything he does in the flesh is taken up into the divinity, the Godhead, so that he, Jesus, true man, is to be known as God who has suffered and died for every sinner. And because the one on the cross is true God, his death and his resurrection pertains to every sinner of every generation, for God is eternal. So Mary calls this child in her womb, God my Savior. That she needs a savior is Mary's confession that she is in sinful flesh, like all the children born of the lineage of Adam, and is in need of salvation. That this child in her womb is her savior is Mary's confession that this is the one to give the sacrifice to atone for the sin of Mary and of the world. That this child is true God is Mary's confession that this one she bears in her womb is conceived in her, not by flesh nor by the will of man, but by God the Holy Spirit, giving her to bear this child, though she is a virgin. Her child is our Savior too, Savior from sin. For we, along with Mary, are born in the lineage of Adam and are in sinful flesh. Not sinful because we sin, Rather, we sin because we're sinful. A snake is not a snake because he strikes. Rather, a snake strikes because he's a snake. The problem is not that a snake strikes, but that he's a snake, and he does what a snake does. He strikes because he's a snake. That's who he is. For the sinner, a sinner is not a sinner because he sins. Rather, he sins because he's a sinner. That's who he is. Our problem then at the face of God is not that we sin. It is that we are sinful from our very origin. And as sinners, we sin. Because we are of sinful flesh, we stand before God, not in need of not doing sin. That's not possible anyway. But we stand before God in need of a savior. For no sinner can save himself. No sinner can make himself to be other than what he is. So we need a savior. Mary's child is our savior. He takes care of our sin not by telling us how to not be sinners, but by forgiving our sin. Forgiving the sins we have committed, forgiving the sins we will commit, forgiving us of our sinful flesh that causes it all, forgiving us of who we are. He took all that upon himself, the sin of every generation. The generation of Adam and Eve, he took that sin on himself. The sin of those who insulted him and spit on him and said, crucify him, crucify him, he took that sin on himself. The sin of you and me and our children, he took all of it on himself. He crucified it on the cross. His blood then atones for our sin, the sins we have committed, and much more, our sinful flesh from which they come. Our guilt 
is covered in the righteous blood, our consciences cleansed, so that along with Mary, we call him God, my Savior. Now all generations call Mary blessed, for she was God's instrument, his chosen vessel, to bear God the Son into the flesh, so that as the church confesses Jesus as true God, we confess Mary as the mother of God. She was, in the ways of this world, maybe unremarkable, of humble estate, to use her words, a servant. But God took her up into his use and gave her to be the vessel of the Most High God coming in the flesh for every sinner. All generations, including our own, call her blessed. For when we look upon her son, we see God our Savior. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. who kills and makes alive. You have kept your promise to send a Savior from the house of David, conceived of the Virgin, as you gave your servant Mary faith to receive the words of Gabriel with joy and sustained her in humble service to our Lord. Open our hearts to joyfully hear your promise of salvation through your Son and sustain us in joyful service to you and our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. O Father, Holy Lord, who humbles and who exalts, as we long for your Son's final advent, let us rejoice that you lengthen these last days, that still more may hear of your Son's saving work and have faith. Send forth your Spirit upon your church, that we may use this precious gift of time by faithfully confessing your Son, the Son of Mary, the Savior of the nations, Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, our Savior, Lord of glory, defend and encourage all missionaries and their families, both in this land and throughout the world. Open their lips to proclaim Jesus and all the fullness of his eternal truth, that many may be called out of idolatry and have life forever in his name, Lord, in your mercy. O Lord of the Church, ruler in Israel, build up your Church in your Gospel that your Kingdom of Grace may flourish. Bless Matthew, our Synodical President, Roger, our District President, and all pastors and servants of the Church, that they may faithfully serve in humility. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the Church, Shepherd of the Flock, keep your sheep safe in your gospel, protecting them from all false doctrines and false liturgies. Be with the men preparing for the office of holy ministry, especially Marsh Schomburger and Rob Doty, and bless those who teach your word, especially the professors of the churches, colleges, and seminaries. Lord, in your mercy. O oh, Father in heaven, who loved the world so much that you prepared a body for your own son, that he would be the sacrifice for the sin of the world. Look with mercy on our land, its government, and all the nations of the world. Preserve us from unjust war, bloodshed, and rebellion. Give wisdom to those who serve us, including our president and governor and all mayors, that they may serve for the protection of life, especially the unborn and the most vulnerable, and for the building up of families. Grant your peace to those who serve in the armed forces, protecting them from all harm and danger, and sustaining them in times of separation from loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. O oh, Father of all creation, give strength and zeal to those 
who care for us in times of trouble and need, police officers, firefighters, physicians, nurses, and all caregivers. Give them joy as they carry out their duties for the benefit of all, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O gracious Lord, Son of God, who has sanctified us by the offering of your body once for all, send forth your promised comforter that he may bestow the peace of Christ on those who have troubled hearts, that he may speak the word of peace and reconciliation to all families in any travail or conflict, that he may give the word of blessing to all mothers with child, including Amanda, and that he may give the gift of healing to the injured, the sick, and the hospitalized, including Neil and his family, Lauren, Edna, Al, Jim, Lynn, Wayne, Russell, Jan, Laura, John, Jim, Brooks, Marianne, Shannon, Kylie, Becky, Marty, and David. Lord, in your mercy. O oh, Holy Spirit, Lord God, who bestowed upon Holy Mother Mary the gift of a son, as we await the annual celebration of our Lord Jesus' first advent, and we anticipate his final appearing, prepare those who commune this day to receive his advent among us now in his precious body and blood, that with sins forgiven, we may rejoice in your pardon and rescue and build up one another in his gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your boundless mercy, you sent your servant, John the Baptist, to proclaim that in Christ the kingdom of heaven draws near. 
With thankful hearts we pray, come Lord Jesus, confident that in his body and blood given us to eat and drink, we receive the forgiveness of sins and so proclaim his death until he comes again in glory. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. <clears throat> Pass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. This is the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. few announcements, though I think everything's in the bulletin, but because we're entering into Christmas week, just to make a few quick announcements to sort of remind ourselves. First, this morning, we have the youth giving us the cookie walk. So if you need some, if you need some more cookies around the house, then th they will help you out. And the, um, the, the money that they raise from that goes, it helps them uh, pay for their trip to the Higher Things Youth, youth Conference. So and then just for the services this week, Friday is Christmas Eve service. Notice that in the schedule. Saturday is Christmas Day service at 10 a.m. And then, of course, on Sunday, the, the, regular, uh, the regular divine service. We do have catechism class today for all catechism students and their families. Also notice if you would like to donate some cozy socks for the nursing home that can use some gifts for the people there. Notice the tree back in the fellowship hall, or ask uh, Laura Clovis if you have any questions on that. And I think last is that for next year, for the calendar year of 2022, the offering envelopes have been prepared and they're available back in the fellowship hall. Uh, so go back and get your offering envelopes for next year. If you have questions or if something needs to be added or omitted, Please see Nathan Holly. I think that's it for announcements. We do want to welcome any guests. We have another announcement. So anyone who would like Christmas carol sing along, just stay in your pews after after I exit, and those of you who want to exit too and, and all that, but stay in your pews and have have a nice time of Christmas carol sing along. Uh, we do want to welcome any guests that we have with us, especially if you're a guest. It's an honor to be with you at the Lord's name. And as you leave the Lord's service, either now or after singing some Christmas carols, uh, join us for coffee and other things back in the fellowship hall. And join us after that, if you're able, for Bible class and Sunday school. But we go forth in our Lord's name. getting it from me, okay? 